Hello, this is Mark Boyer, and this is a short uh, video on my uh, elections, the letter that I posted two days ago on the Elections Canada uh, engagement of Mark Medan, who is a the CEO of Elections Canada. Uh, prior to being CEO, he was a bankruptcy trustee, okay, and he wrote the trust act you know his trust his blind trust and it took him a year and a half to write this and it happened under uh, Harper's watch when he first got elected okay now in okay what I'm doing is an OPPT public trust challenge which was passed on December 25th this is the preamble to what I'm doing okay uh, on December 25th, uh, the UCC highest courts passed and implemented uh, a new public trust to serve the creator. Okay, period. Okay, that's what went down. And they say it'll affect uh, Jubilee, which is the payment of all debt. Because as soon as you change the public trust from serving the sovereign, which is what the bar swears to, which authority, everyone in authority swears to serve the sovereign. And the challenge is to change to swearing to serve the creator. And that was accomplished through an OPPT challenge, which went, not many people are acting on it. I hear some people are walking away from their uh, bank loans and uh, mortgage payments because of it, these the shenanigans done by the banks. But... What happened next, which is really important, is that when the new Pope came into effect, he gave, which is in March, okay, March 1st, okay, he gave a decree saying, uh, backing up the OPPT, okay, and I, I, you know, the politics are that the OPPT challenge is seriously would have affected why the old Pope, the previous Pope resigned. The new pope picked up the horns rather well, okay, and he passed a six-month moratorium that, after six months, all sorts of corporations no longer had immunity from prosecution. And since then, uh, two-thirds, three-quarters of all banksters in the world have resigned, uh, retired, uh, skipped the, the coup because they see the liability of them going to jail. Okay? That six month moratorium ended or start you know ended on September first. Uh, our Minister of Justice resigned about three weeks before that. Uh, because of the moratorium. Okay? He's no he's no dummy, okay? All over the world, uh, people have been you know, the lady in charge of Homeland Security resigned. Uh, they haven't been able to find a replacement for her yet. Um, Bernanke tried to resign. They haven't been able to find a replacement for him yet because these bankers know that the gig's up. Okay, This papal decree is there. Now, in the Commonwealth, who's going to enforce this papal decree? Okay, That's what I'm attacking. Okay, Now, basically I'm saying it's the order of the garter. Instrument holders all over the place. Now, trustees have a rod. Isn't that cool? That's one of the instruments that a trustee has because all trustees swear to the UCC. And there's a big difference between a lawyer and a trustee. A trustee actually swears to the UCC. And that's cool. That's cool. That's one of the reasons why you should go see a trust lawyer. Okay? Now, serving to the sovereign's interest has been the rule uh, since uh, Nineveh. Okay, and they can go back with their histories and long histories or whatever. Nineveh is where the whole notion of serving the sovereign came from. It's the cornerstone of the bar. All lawyers swear to serve the sovereign's interests. Okay, and that was the formation of the mindset that this king is big. Okay, he's God's authority and voice. Okay. And that goes all the way back to Nineveh. And the Bible says nothing good came from Nineveh. In Genesis, 
it says there that when we were in the garden, we were there to serve the Creator. And the OPPT is relying on that phrase, okay? And they really are a legitimate Millennium Trust challenge should arise from what OPPT says, and that will lead to Jubilee. Now, how do you get a government to engage in this new OPP trust? And that's what I'm doing. Okay. Mark Mirand, okay, the, the person who I'm serving here, is the main trustee for Canada. He's the guy who wrote the blind trust for Elections Canada. Okay. Now, as I'm pointing out in this letter, okay, he swears to the UCC. Okay, that, that's it. End of story. He's the main guy in Canada who swears to the UCC. And until pressed, he can he doesn't have to change over from the old oath to the UCC. He's now held to a new oath as soon as someone presses that button that that's what he wants to have happen. And that's what I'm doing. Okay. And I'm using uh, the fact that Jean-Pierre Kinsley, okay, when he quit, it was over something, some paperwork that I would filed on him back then, okay? Now, the reality is, is I've got an open file in Mr. Meran's trust. He couldn't close it, okay? So I'm attracting it. I'm, I'm attaching it to that as well. But the, the fact is that under old UCC law, uh, Mr. Kinsley did have, uh, did not violate the form to the extent that Mr. Midan carried on. Okay. Uh, the, his behavior is justified in his blind trust and he, it's on his watch where this happened. And as a direct reference to the Pope and his papal decree that you have to change your ways and otherwise your life, you know, that's it. Okay. Now, the reality is, is prior, while Jim, while Mr. Kinsley has watch as the trustee of Elections Canada, uh, the post of, uh, party whip was, uh, a separate form. And my trustee assures me that the party whip was like the sheriff for each party. And he swore to the UCC. Okay. Now, when I filed for my party whip status, uh, they send me a form where it's just like, uh, I could be the secretary, I could be the accountant, I could be uh, an officer, I could be party whip, it's just another title. And in other words, uh, the government under Mr. Medan's watch uh, perverted the form because there is no police UCC police in Parliament anymore. Okay? And that's serious. Okay? That's by definition corporate tyranny. Okay? They're not taking, they're not taking any orders or taking anything from the UCC anymore. They, they've walked away from it. And that by definition is corporate tyranny. Okay? So, I arranged through my party leader back in September 11th, that I would be nominated as party whip. That's something the leader does, and he's standing firm under the fact that I'm doing this. He knows well aware of what I'm doing, and he actually thinks, you know, a very negative personality, and the guy who thinks it just can't work actually sees where this might. Isn't that cool? No. What can I say? It's, it's supposed to inspire hope. So, if you go see this letter, you know, this, this letter I wrote, it's, it's getting a lot of coverage, okay? A lot of people are, are hitting on this letter. Uh, what can I say? It's, it's sparking a court. Now, what happens is, is, uh, I, on October 11th, or shortly before that, the, uh, Mr. Midand is bound constitutionally to recognize me as party whip of the Marijuana Party of Canada. It's a 30-day process, okay, from the time the party leader does it to October, which was September 11th, and it will fall on October 11th, okay, that uh, he has to act. 
because I'm insisting that I want to take the new oath under the UCC public trust. I don't know what it says, but it's definitely serving the Creator. Okay, because that's what the OPPT did, and that's what the Pope endorsed. Okay, this is really, really big. I, 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 okay, basically what happens is, is since I'm demanding under mandamus to take this oath because my Pope says I have to do this. And you know what? Mr. Medan, his authority is the Pope. He's the highest ranking trustee in Canada under Elections Canada. And I'm forcing him to take that oath as well. Isn't that cool? Now, that means he takes the oath. That means every other party uh, whip of all the other political parties must take the oath. Okay, whatever this new oath of serving the Creator as opposed to serving the Sovereign's interest, which is what the UCC and the Pope are demanding society does. Okay, they are triggering fundamental change because the archetypal form is broken. So we have a situation here where if the harpster doesn't stop operating under corporate tyranny, uh, then his own party whip with the Elections Canada uh, CEO has to arrest Mr. Harper. Isn't that cool? Okay. It, it goes deeper than that. It means since these guys, since the head of Elections Canada is serving the new UCC oath, it means all these officers called uh, special agents, which were formed under... Uh, uh, this corporate takeover back in the 1998 Police Act, okay, have to now take the new oath to the UCC of serving the Creator and start enforcing it. That means sheriffs all over the world, all over Canada, have to swear an oath and start defending that they have, they're no longer serving the sovereign's interest. And that's big. You, you can't ignore the constitutionality of that. It changes the whole playing field of how government works. And it's a trap. It's a constitutional trap. I didn't set it up. Well, actually, I set up this trap for them to do it. But uh, the Pope and uh, the OPPT, which apparently, to my understanding, was totally funded by the Rockefeller Foundation, uh, were pushing big constitutional buttons in order to effect a peaceful makeover and that's exactly what I'm trying to do okay big changes have to occur for us to uh, inherit the earth okay uh, basically what I'm doing is uh, what a genuine Millennium Trust is supposed to do which is challenge the status quo of serving the sovereign which is pure evil and they're convinced all nobility and everybody that this is their God's agents. No, 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 they're not. Go back to Nineveh. They're demonic agents. As the Hebrews won, they would rather serve the cre creatures rather than serve the creator. Okay? Uh, what we're having here is a genuine millennium trust where authority is having to make a real choice. Isn't that cool? And it's authority who's supposed to be tested. So says uh, the ground rules of a Millennium Challenge. And uh, the trustees uh, all over are being forced because the head trustee is uh, swearing, to serve the, so, uh, swearing to serve the Creator soon because I insisted on it. And uh, if I insist on it, then the, all the others have to. Isn't that cool? That's what you call real fundamental change. And uh, basically, uh, it's consent of the governed, which makes this all happen. Okay, uh, You, the people out there, are given an opportunity to stop serving the sovereign and serve the creator. And in this way, paradise on earth returns. That's all it's simple. Because what it'll trigger is Jubilee. All debt has to be annulled. All trust funds 
have to be cashed in. Uh, and that's deca quadrillions, deca octillions of dollars being entered into the market that redeems all debt because the Ponzi scheme called fractional reserve banking simply cannot exist under the trust of serving the creator. It's that simple. Everything changes. Okay? We go from serving the sovereign, which is everything evil, to serving the creator, which was the very intent of mankind in, in uh, paradise on earth. You know what? Back in Eden. And uh, uh, I'm shamelessly pushing those buttons. And if people don't like it, then that's just the way it is. Um, what can I say? It's a brave new world, and may we live in interesting times. But there is an opportunity here for authority to change their evil ways. And I'm doing it with a strategic stab to the heart of the one who must make a choice, which is Mr. Merland. Okay? And, and on that, I used a really nice biblical verse to end this paragraph this page which comes from Ecclesiastes and Solomon saying how you know it's all <laughs> follow the king uh, no matter how evil he is because he'll spank you if you stick your head up okay and he ends off and all judges know this verse because it's taught to them okay at least what can I say and it basically goes since a king's word is supreme who can say to him, what are you doing? Well, the king Harpster has taken phenomenal rules under um, King, uh, king Henry VIII's archetypal form. And the reality is, is Mr. Medand is one of these people who can come to him and say, what are you doing? Okay, so I'll start over. Since the king's word is supreme, who can say to him, what are you doing? Who, oh, whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. That's the guy who said, what are you doing? Not the king. Okay. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. For there is a proper time and procedure for every matter. Though a person may be weighed down by misery. Since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? It, 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 it's a great passage, okay? And uh, that's exactly what a Millennium Trust does. It's supposed to challenge a path to all good, which is called good first fruit, or a path to a shithole, which is bad first fruit. And Jesus Christ said there is no substitute for good first fruit. And uh, that's exactly what I'm pressing. Under no circumstances am I ever doing anything that... Uh, would immediately and ex lead to bad first fruit. It's a choice thing that authority has to do. And uh, the voice from the West is making this challenge. And if people don't like my biblical references, then they don't like my biblical references. When it all comes down, everyone has to make a choice to walk away from serving the sovereign and enter uh, serving the creator and in this way we inherit the earth as sons uh, it's big and on that uh have a nice day what can i say uh, thank you